Can you see me? Yeah, we'll see you in a second. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, yet again, yet again to another edition of What Really Matters NYC with your host, Tony Keevan. And we are live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And this show is about topics that pertain to Manhattan. And it's live. You can dial in at this number and you can talk if you want to. Um, typically, we have our commentator, Lorraine, on the phone. She's not on tonight. And we've got a couple topics here. We're going to start with an update on Venezuela, okay? And uh, then we'll get to something about pressure cookers. So we've got a slide that's just on the Venezuela activist. And we're going to bring up our Venezuela activist because we haven't spoken to him for a while. And a lot's been going on. If you know, we've done about six shows on Venezuela. And every time, um, you know, it seems to change and get, uh, you know, uh, different. First it was Chavez and then Maduro came in and then they cracked down on the opposition. And then, you know, he's still in power and... There are many, many, many troubles there, and of course the price of oil is way down. So we thought we'd reach out to get an update because we haven't spoken to our, uh, our Venezuelan activists for, I don't know, three months now. How, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Okay, excellent. So we, we can't have your video. That's probably more better for security reasons. So tell us a little bit what's going on in Venezuela. We have got some uh, pictures that you sent us that we're happy to run as a slideshow whenever you want to. But tell us what you're, um, what, what's going on in Venezuela, would you? Uh, well, the situation in Venezuela has gone, uh, is deteriorating uh, on a daily basis. Um, right now there's a, a huge move to try to have a referendum done this year. And uh, to, today the latest in regards to that, to have Maduro um, uh, removed from power, it's that the CNE, which is the National Electoral of Venezuela, they released um, um, a statement saying that they will allow the 20 to, re to be able to, for the opposition to collect 20% of the signatures, and uh, which is on is by the constitution as a whole by the country 20%. But now they are changing themselves the constitution saying that no, it needs to be 20% by state. So if each individual state doesn't get the 20%, then there is no referendum, which is something that is not written in the Constitution. They're changing it themselves. Wow, that's shocking. We've got some pictures of, I guess, um, can you just tell us what's going on? We've been watching them as you've been talking. Um, it, you know, the situation in Venezuela, is, it's completely, uh, uh, the, you know, the BBC and the New York Times correspondents, they actually left the country yesterday and the day before. They uh, wrote, the New York Times wrote an article about today in the BBC as well. They, 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 their correspondents, they don't feel secure reporting in Venezuela anymore, so they left. Um, I don't know if, if some still there, but the major correspondents left. Um, it's very hard to find um, food in Venezuela, like basic things, such as flour, such as beans such as rice and sugar it's like it's a struggle for the people there are queues in every supermarket state owned or privately owned um and there's a lot of scarcity so that's what you see you see people going into the trash to find you know from restaurants that are able to still have some customers usually the upper class are still you know doing well they're importing most of their goods um but the people that voted for the government, for the current government, they are not actually having a good time. So, uh, where is all this going? Um, because, you know, we've been here before. Now they're going to change the Constitution. Well, they're do, not we, do, do we they need another Simon Bolivar not revolution? They're not changing the Constitution. They are actually bypassing the constitution and 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 dictating the rules by themselves it's not they don't have the power to amend the constitution okay so yeah so they're doing even worse than that so <laughs> what's going to happen though because they're just going to keep doing that until well, so they, the chavistas are uh, are very worried because they know they don't have the majority of the country anymore um they lost a lot of um support and um right now they have to be um, 
there are two things happening right now with the referendum. One is to have Maduro removed from power this year. Um, if it's not done this year, then there will be a referendum next year, which is what they want. So then the current vice president would take over Maduro. So it's not, it's just, you know, replacing one pawn for another. Um, but if they do the referendum this year before December ends, then they will have an election. They have to have a national election with opposition candidates running with whoever wants to run on the other side. So that's what the, the Chavistas are extremely worried because they're trying to delay this process as much as they can. They'd rather have it next year. Because if they have a next year, there will be in a referendum. They will just remove Maduro and replace him with VP, which is another Chavista and another, um, another you know episode. Yeah, another episode more of the drama. Also, they are supposed to be government um, elections in every state for new governors, new mayors. All that is supposed to take place this year, and there and, and the electoral council has not release any of that information as well because they know they would lose the majority of the country. They 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 don't have the country anymore. It's gone, it's it's over. The Chavismo is over in Venezuela and they're trying to hold power somehow and the only way they can remove hold power for a couple more years it's by having the referendum next year. So when do you predict violence to ensue? Because um I mean that's really gonna well, be the tipping been, point been going on. I mean, there is so much violence right now. There's a lot of people, you know, breaking into stores. No, but I mean revolutionary violence, where everyone goes against the government and throws them out and kills them. War. Sorry? Uh, you're talking about civil war at this S point. Yeah, I civil mean, war. Yeah, because everyone's been saying that for almost a year now. And now it's the people are eating on the street, so it's, there, it's, it's not far away. You know what? It's up to them. I, I, you know, they elected the government that they have. Um, I'm Venezuelan, and I, you know, I never voted for this government. Um, and it's up to them to decide when and how to get to 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 get it out. Because if by following the law, it's not they're not allowing them to to make a change. Then they're going to have to have public disobedience. Yeah, I just think it's going to come to that, like you said. Um, all right. Well, listen. Um, uh, it's sort of a uh, it's a staggering subject because it covers it's so much. Is, is there anything happening in the UN this week? Is he is he visiting this week? Is uh, is our senator up in Harlem giving him another audience? Uh, uh, who knows? I mean, I don't think so because Maduro, uh, the uh, PDVSA, the state oil company, is broke. They don't have money to give any any other country right now. Um, right now, they're having a huge uh, mess here in the U.S. with Zitco and. Um, uh, he, um, Pedevesa and Sitko's uh, top executives, two of them are already in jail. They they committed, they were indicted in Texas this year. So oh, wow. they've been investigated. Um, so Pedevesa is broke. They have really no money. Their oil production has gone to the lowest since the last 30 years. Um, there was an article about that today in the New York Times. Um, and also, uh, Maduro decided not to come to the United Nations because he knows he doesn't have backing or support for the American state. So instead, he sent his foreign minister, which it's a woman who is totally uneducated. She has no idea what she talks. She doesn't talk. She doesn't represent Venezuela. She repre represents the very close selective Chavista circle that she is, but she doesn't represent the country. Do you know her name? Um, and she is in there. And also with her, as a human rights advocate, it's the judge who sentenced Leopoldo Lopez to 14 years in, uh, in jail. So this judge who presided over the case, who did not allow him to have a witness for him to defend himself, she is actually part of the Venezuelan um, uh, delegation? Delegates, yes, that are representing Venezuela, the United Nations. Oh, she's here this week? Yes, the judge is actually in, in, in part of the delegation from Venezuela this oh week. Oh my gosh, do you know her name? Juez Barreros. Juez Susana Barreros. Barreros. <laughs> Welcome to New York City, Juez Barreros. Oh my gosh, Barreros. we didn't know you were here. What's her name? 
Susana Barreiro. She's the judge who presided the the, 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 the the trial that the judge who did not allow Leopoldo to have a single witness. Well, you know, we should we should hold and her. I, I would suggest the here. Trump campaign grab her as an illegal immigrant while she's driving her cab between United Nations buildings and, you know, do some Trump type interrogation and uh, see how that goes. It's disgusting. The woman, <laughs> she, she was trying, the government was trying to send her as a diplomat and up to Chile and they refused her there. So now she's, you I know, I can't believe she's Venezuela. in our country. Oh, oh, how sad. She's representing Venezuela and the delegate, the Venezuelan delegations against human rights abuse. This judge who did not allow a person to defend himself in a trial. Well, all you Venezuelans here who have a passion, you know she's in town, okay? I guess she's in town for a couple of days, so you need to get out and protest if you can. Um, wow, it's so sad, Venezuela. It's such a rich country, but with such um, small, corrupt, ignorant power centers, it uh, really has gone way down the drain. Uh, from me, too, you know. I was, uh, you know, Venezuelan at one point. So it means a lot, and it's very sad that it's going this direction. But like I said, you know, violence, I think, is, the, is, is on the way. I'm not advocating violence anybody, uh, anywhere, but, you know, it just doesn't seem possible to adjust the situation any way other than through violence. They have to have, they have, to have an overthrow. The government is not allowed for, um, for a change under the Constitution to avoid violence. So the only resource is violence. It's it is either or. Yeah, we're not calling for there violence. Is, there is ladies not a gentlemen. third option at this. We're point. just analyzing. We're not calling for that. We're just analyzing. It's yeah, a, there is there is no third alternative. I don't see a third alternative either. And um, there's enough guns out there, right? <laughs> so well, <laughs> well, Venezuela, not, Caracas is is the the most dangerous capital city in the world right now. So. So there you have it. There you that have should it. answer your question. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, we really appreciate your time and your update as always. And um, we're sorry that it's uh, come this far for so long and still not a resolution to this story that we've been covering here for, I guess, almost three years now. Um, so we'll talk to you again a little later. Thanks for the supply of the pictures and for the update and um, all our. Well, well, I'm sure. Thank you for having me. OK, thank you very much. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. This history in Venezuela is touching you here in New York City with that judge riding around. Just think about that. Your taxpayer dollars are supporting her on the street. Yeah. All right, yeah, so we'll dump, jump to the next topic or leave that one up. Do you agree with the Trump pressure cooker ban? You can call in about that if you want. And But I think we'll try to reach out to the uh, weather dude, get the NYC weather dude update, and we'll see how that goes. And, um, you know, I'm sorry Lorraine's not here to banter with because usually she's a very um, nice person to talk to. So I don't have anyone to talk to, so it's just myself. Of course, I want to thank uh, Ryan, our producer, as always and Jordan in the control room, and Corey who makes it all happen in the back there. And of course the executive management, we appreciate their patience. And um, NYC Weather Dude, he's in his philosophy class right now, so he probably won't answer. But he'll see it ring and he'll get up and come on out. And uh, that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Of course we've got the uh, the bombing in Chelsea, if you want to call about that, that's been covered a lot already. Uh, I, I, yeah, we can hang up on weather, dude. Yeah. Thank you, man. So, you know, if you're from Chelsea, if you're still scared, if you were scared, you can call in and express yourself here. And tell us how that was, how that, how that felt. Um, you know, I lived in Bogota, Colombia for five years. So I'm sort of used to that sort of stuff. I'm sort of numb to it, sadly. Yeah, I lived at the height of the Escobar years. Can you imagine? Amazing, amazing time. Uh, 
But yeah, it's been an amazing week, ladies and gentlemen. Trump is ahead. The election's not far away. It's within striking distance. We made our prediction last week. Yeah. Passing your seatbelts. And um, we got the bombings. More bombing. Hey, man. They're wondering what's going on on the air here. Since no one's calling, they're going to throw me off. They're going to come take me away. Hey, NYC weather, dude. How are you? We're really good. Did we interrupt anything? We're really sorry if we rang too early. No, you're good. Uh, we're all good here. We, uh, we had an interview with the State of Affairs in Venezuela, and uh, we were just touching base on the, um, the pressure cooker bomber, and then we were looking for you because Lorraine's taking the day off, so it's really nice to see you, NYC Weather Dude. Awesome. Holding it down. All right, my friend. Do your thing. Cool. You guys ready to go? As always, with you. All right. Awesome. So... It looks like this Thursday and Friday, we're going to have a tag team of 84 degrees going down pretty drastically, more than 10 degrees to 71 on Saturday, even lower on Sunday, and back up again Monday, stooping back up to Tuesday and Wednesday. Overall, we have the 84, 84, 71, 67, 69, 74, and 75. So it looks like tomorrow and the next day are going to be the hottest days for the seven-day forecast. And it looks like that coldest day is going to definitely be Sunday. Um, I'm personally enjoying this nice transition into fall weather, but it is kind of annoying to wake up um, cold and then be extremely hot during the day and then go to bed cold as well. Um, so now that the weather's concluded, I hope you all take that with what you will. Um, I'd like to share a, a motivational story, um, and I give full credit for this to Eric Thomas, who's a motivational speaker you can find on YouTube or other such outlets. Um, but he, he mentions this one story where he talks about um, a gazelle and a lion, and he says what happens to the gazelle when the lion's not chasing him, and he stops, and he stops running. He always needs something external to motivate him to accomplish anything. Um, and so he says is you want to encourage yourself to be more like the lion because the lion is thinking about reasons why he's hunting that gazelle because he has to feed himself, he has to feed his family, he has things that he needs to, to do. And once you focus on your reason being your why, you can uh, no longer need a lion to chase you. Instead of being the gazelle, you can be the lion who has a reason for executing uh, on, on his goals. And then Rolling into a health tip, um, some quick tips to crave like uh, a late night sugar tooth is uh, sweet tooth is if you instead of grabbing like one of those uh, yogurts which people think are good for you but they really have a very high sugar content a lot of them be aware of that um, like just an apple with some almond butter or uh, you know like a fig with some kind of cottage cheese or ricotta is is so much better. Uh, alternative to satisfying the sweet tooth if you have a late night craving. And I've talked about it before, when you go to bed, uh, your metabolism slows down, so your body can't even be awake to process the food as it would normally if you were awake. So if you're eating cake and then you're going to bed right afterwards, um, it's very, very bad. <laughs> Sounds uh, bad. So that, that's about it, Tony. But how, how's everything with you guys? It must be a little bit quiet with, with, with Lorraine missing. <laughs> Yes, it is. It's a little bit. We're missing one of the uh, lateral views, as I call them. Um, yes, but, uh, you know, she's got other gigs to do here and there, so uh, what can you do, you know? But she loves us. She tells us she loves us, and I know she loves you and appreciates all the insights you give us. Um, you know what I think the number one song is this week? It's um, by Major Lazer. It's called Cold Water. I... <laughs> <laughs> I know that's why I mentioned it to you. Anyway, we'll play it at the end of the show. But we're, uh, we, yeah, we, like I said, we talked a little Venezuela update, and we're just taking it easy, rolling into the rest of this week. We're gonna open the phones on the uh, the Trump pressure cooker ban. I don't know if you heard about that. No. No. Well, you'd have to tune in then to find out. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> but I know you got to get back to class or anything like that. Yeah. Okay, my friend, you go. We, we love you, okay? Thanks for joining. Thanks for uh, pitching in, NYC Weather Dude, okay? Absolutely, guys. Peace right. and love. Okay, bye. Take care. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. 
where else, man? You get so much in 28 minutes here. I mean, already you've reached your limit on great content, unedited, seamlessly produced by Ryan, brought to you from all over the world via Skype, with our live Earth Cam Times Square background. And, um, yeah, we've got a couple more minutes. We've got a slide with just a second topic on it up there, I think, is uh, what we should do. But do you agree with the Trump pressure cooker ban? Um, there you go. And uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, I don't have much else to talk about. There was the bombings, and they caught the guy, and then they caught more guys, and they got a video of the guys taking the thing out of the suitcase and putting it on the sidewalk. <laughs> they were looking for something valuable inside the suitcase, and all they took was the suitcase, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's such a classic New York story. <laughs> Hello? You're on the air. Hello? Tuning in. Hi. Hi. How are you? Tuning in. Good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So I'm just tuning in, and I was just wondering what um, what is going on with Trump. Like, what's the ban all about? I'm sorry if this is redundant. I just tuned in, so I'm a little confused with the ban. Oh, the pressure cooker ban. I've heard. I read somewhere that he was actually proposing to ban pressure cookers in New York City, so we couldn't cook with pressure cookers anymore. Do you use a pressure cooker? I don't. Oh, well, then you wouldn't, but you wouldn't I would be imagine <laughs> that that would be awful to not have access to a pressure cooker if you're wanting to make beans. Well, this is what came out of his campaign today. We've asked for comment. There's been no comment back. So we're, we're using our pressure cooker before the ban kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, okay, well, thanks for letting me know what's going on with that crazy... Weirdo guy. No, nah, hey, you want to watch the number one, big time. the number one Hot 100 digital song in America? It's coming on right now. You ready? Ready. Okay, turn it way up. We love you. Thanks for calling. Okay. Have a good night. You too, love. Peace. Gentlemen, this is Major Lasers, Cold Water featuring Justin Bieber. You guys enjoy it, ma'am. You just tuned in. You tune it way up and relax and enjoy this bit of pop culture, which is the number one song. Whether you like it or not. Everybody gets high sometimes, you know. What else can we do when we're feeling low? So take a deep breath and let it go. You shouldn't be drowning on your own. And if you feel you're sinking, I will jump right over into cold, cold water for you.
you know, it's sad sometimes without Lorraine, but it was a good show. I want to thank our caller who was such a good sport to call in. Thank our guest, Venezuelan activist. We in no way meant or mean to ever inspire violence on this show, but we talked about the choices coming up in Venezuela, what apparently is left. And um, we touched base on a certain judge who's visiting here in Venezuela this week uh, who helped put the real activist in jail. Think about that. We're hosting that person. And think about the election coming up. And don't forget about the uh, pressure cooker, the Trump pressure cooker ban. I want to thank Ryan, who always makes this show so beautiful. Thank you, Ryan, really. And uh, Jordan for putting it on the air, like I said before, Eminem for letting us do this thing. And again, for you guys calling, Earth Cam for the Times Square background. Everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to NYC Weather Dude, okay? Really appreciate it. He always teaches me something. Thank you guys for watching, too, okay? You guys make the show. I feel you. I know you're there. All right? So I really appreciate that. That's why I keep coming back every week. It's not all the nice... Thank you, Bob. Camera moves by Bob. Uh, it's, it's you, you know. You, you make me feel good when I do the show, so thank you. All right. I'm going to cry, so I'm going to sign off. Peace, love. Remember, if it's Wednesday, is what really matters, NYC. Peace, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>